Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, this is going to be part three of the mystery of Babylon. Now, this is going to, I'm going to cover kind of briefly the dividing of the kingdom of Israel from the kingdom of Judah. So let's go to the King James Bible and go turn to 1 Kings chapter 12. And Rehoboam came to Shechem, for all Israel were come to make to uh, were come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, for he was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt, that they sent and called him. And Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, Now, Rehoboam is going to be the kingdom. Uh, all right, first you had Saul, King Saul, who was replaced by King David, and then David had Solomon. Now, Solomon's son here is Rehoboam. So, they, the kingdom of Israel is coming to, I guess, the coronation of Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But in verse 4, this is what they're saying. Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke, which he put upon us, lighter, and we will serve thee. Now, you got to realize something. The, uh, the king... Solomon had, what, 700 and something, you know, like 700 wives and 300 and something concubines. I mean, can you imagine paying child support on 700 wives and 300 concubines, which is basically an unmarried wife? I mean, really? Can you imagine supporting a household like that? So basically what everybody's saying is, uh, hey, can, you know, your father's taxes were really, really heavy. Can you can you cut back a little bit on the government and you know give us a, a tax cut here? Um, you know that's that's the Bob translation. And he, Rehoboam, said unto them, Depart ye for three days, and then come again to me. And the people departed. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived, and said, How do ye advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant. You see, people, they're supposed to be, leaders are supposed to be servants. If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and wilt serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. But he forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, and which stood before him. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that we may answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter? And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. In other words, you think uh, my father's taxes were heavy? Huh. Wait till I get done with you. And now, therefore, whereas my father did laid you with a heavy yoke, I will add, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, 
but I will chastise you with scorpions. Yeah, don't listen to the old guys, you know, l listen to the kids, you know, the, the people that grew up with you, you know, basically, they're saying, uh, you know what, show these people that you're king, and that you mean business. So, Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day as the king had appoint, appointed, saying, come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly and forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him and spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Therefore the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was from the Lord, for the cause was from the Lord, that he might perform his saying, which the Lord spake to Ahijah the Shilonite, unto Jeroboam the son of Nebat. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Now, David was of the tribe of Judah. And they're basically saying, wait a minute, we're not of your tribe. You know, uh, what portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. Jesse was the son of, I mean, the, the father of David. So they say, to your tents, O Israel, now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. So basically, they're saying, uh, well, I guess the modern, a modern translation would be, screw you, we're out of here. Uh, forgive me for, if that's an unbiblical language, but, you know, that's basically what they're saying here. So, verse 17. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the tribute. In other words, he was the IRS agent. He collected the taxes. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the tribute, and all Israel stoned him with stones that he died. How's that for a uh, thing, you know? Oh, you're going to send your IRS agent here? We're going to kill him, right? Therefore, King Rehoboam made speed to get up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. Yeah, so the king sent his IRS agent after him. They killed the IRS agent, and the king hightailed it to get to his chariot and ran off to get back to Jerusalem. Verse 19. So Israel rebelled, rebelled against the house of David unto this day. And it came to pass when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel. So you got Rehoboam, king of Judah, and Jeroboam, king of Israel. And stupid uh, preachers and will tell you that Israel and Judah were the same people. Really, that's why they had different kings. That's why they lived in different areas. That's why they had wars against each other. Right? Because they're the same people. No, they're not. But, um, you see, they don't want you... Most church... Preachers, I guess, their job's to deceive the flock if they're not deceived themselves. I don't know. And God's going to judge and decide that matter one day. All right. And it came to pass when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel 
There was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin. All right, so the king of Judah, uh, Jerusalem, had the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Benjamin, and a portion of Levi, because they were the ones that served in the temple. So he got 104 score thousand chosen men. So he's got an army here of a, uh, 180,000 chosen men, which were warriors to fight against the house of Israel to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But the word of God came unto Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and unto all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. They hearken therefore to the word of the Lord, and return to depart according to the word of the Lord. Ah, here it gets interesting. All right, verse 25. Then Jeroboam, now remember, Jeroboam's the king of Israel. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in Mount Ephraim. Ephraim was the main tribe, one of the main tribes in um, Israel, northern Israel. And dwelt therein and went out from thence and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David, if this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem. Then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. So, he's worried that if everybody goes down to Jerusalem and does temple sacrifice there, that they're going to, uh, you know, return to the king of Ju uh, Judah. Verse 28, so what was his, uh, what was his idea? Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. The golden calves. Isn't that what they did in, um, coming out of Egypt? Yeah. He made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods. Yeah, a golden calf. Behold thy gods, O Israel which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Sure, let's get into idolatry, people. Don't go to Jerusalem. And he set the one up in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. Now, Bethel, Beth means house. Bethel means house of God. Can you imagine that? In a place called the house of God, you're going to put a golden calf and this thing became a sin. For the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. And he made a house of high places. And made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. So in other words, he installed a satanic worship here. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah, and he offered upon the altar, so did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made, and he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the eighth month, even the month which he had devised of his own heart, and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel, and he offered upon the altar and burnt incense." Not a good thing to do. So, God is not happy with this. Trust me. So, years go by. You know who was one of the kings of Israel? A guy named Ahab. He had a wife. Her name was Jezebel. Perhaps you've heard of them. In uh, 1 Kings 16.30, and Ahab, the son of Omri. Now, this is King Ahab. 
And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil, evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Wow. All right, in 1 Kings 16, 33. And Ahab made a grove. Now, you know, a, a fruit grove in and of itself is not evil, but uh, witches love to worship in the groves. You know, they worship Mother Nature, they say. So when they talk about the grove, they serve the grove, they, they went upon the high places. They're talking about Satanism, people. And Ahab made a grove, 1 Kings 16.33. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Wow. So, you see, we're going to turn to Isaiah chapter 10. We're going to read the whole thing. Now, to study future prophecy, you have to study past history because history repeats itself. It always does. It just, it does. That's just the way it is. All right. Isaiah chapter 10. All right. Let's read Isaiah 10. This is addressing the wicked rulers of his God's people. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, unrighteous laws, people, and that write grievousness which they have prescribed, to turn aside the needy from judgment, and to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey. P-R-E-Y, not praying to God and that they may rob the fatherless. Yeah, you're going to take poor widows and rob their children just so you could have a little something extra. And Isaiah writes in verse 3, And what will ye do in the day of visitation? In other words, when the Lord comes back for his visit, what are you going to do, you evil people? And in desolation, which shall come from far, to whom will ye flee for help? And where will ye leave your glory? Without me, they shall bow down under the prisoners, and they shall fall under the slain. For all this, his anger is not turned away. Whose anger? The Lord's anger. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger, and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. Indignation's extreme hatred, people. Verse 6, I will send him, the rod of mine anger, the staff in their hand is mine indignation. I will send him against a, an, an hypocritical nation. Who? Israel. And against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. You see, the Assyrians took Israel captive. Why? Because of kings like Ahab. He's... He... He got angry with them and had it had Assyria come and take them away. And then, uh, I don't know, 100 and something, 200 years later, God got angry with Judah and Jerusalem, and he had Babylon come and take them away. Verse 7, How be he meaneth, not so, neither doth his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. For he saith, Are not my princes altogether kings? Is not Calno as Charhemish? Is not 
uh, Hamath as Arphad is not Samaria as Damascus. Now, Samaria was the capital of Israel, and Damascus was the capital of Assyria, Syria. And um, he's basically saying, you guys are just as bad as the heathens, basically here. Verse 10, as my hand hath found the kingdoms of the idols, isn't that what uh, they did in Israel? He set up golden calves, the idols. As my hand hath found the kingdoms of the idols, and whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem and of Samaria, shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols? Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath performed his whole work, Upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. For he saith, By the strength of my hand I have done it. The king of Assyria is saying, By the strength of my hand I have done it. And by my wisdom, for I am prudent. I and I have removed the bounds of the people and have robbed their treasures and have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. Sounds just like what Nebuchadnezzar did in the last study, right? Verse 4. And my hand hath found as a nest the riches of the people, and as one gathereth eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth, and there was none that moved the wing or opened the mouth or peeped. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth Therewith, or shall the sog magnify against him that shaketh it? Or if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it? Or as if the staff should lift up itself as if it were no wood? Therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among his, among his fat ones leanness. Oh yeah, those of you that are fat from all your uh, having an abundance of food, God's going to make you lean. He's going to cut your food off. And under his glory shall he kindle a burning like the burning of a fire, and the light of Israel shall be for a fire, and his holy one for a flame, and it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. And he shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body, and they shall be as when a standard bearer feigneth. For the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few, that a child may write them. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, the remnant of Israel, and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob, shall no more again Stay upon him that smote him, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. See, God he always has his remnant. Verse 22. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption even determined in the midst of all the land. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwelleth in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod, and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. For yet a little while, and the indignation shall cease, and mine anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Hor Oreb. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. 
And it shall come to pass in that day that this burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And people, this was fulfilled um, when Babylon grew, into, grew up into power. All right, Assyria took Israel captive, and I don't know, a hundred and something years passed, and then the Babylonians came and took Jerusalem. Well, the Assyrians tried to fight the Babylonians, and they sent their entire, you know, virtually their entire army against the Babylonians, and they got their butts whipped bad. The Assyrian Empire collapsed because the Babylonians just wiped them out. Well, and then Israel that had been taken captive and were slaves in the Assyrian Empire looked around, there's no more soldiers around, and they said, you know what, maybe we should uh, hightail it out of Dodge and get out of here. So they did, and according to history, they went north. And from what, and if you look carefully in history, when Israel disappears from history, the Europeans appear in history. Think about that. The northern tribes of Israel never returned to the land. The remnant of Judah did. So, verse 27 was uh, fulfilled in that time. Verse 28. He has come to Aaf. He has passed to Migron at Mishmash, he hath laid up his carriages. They are gone over the passage. They have taken up their lodging at Giba. Ramah is afraid. Gibeah of Saul is fled. Lift up thy vo voice, O daughter of Galam, because it is be heard unto Laish, O poor Anathoth. Madmina is removed. The inhabitants of Gibeah gather themselves to flee. As yet he remain at Nob that day, he shall shake his hand against the mount of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Behold, the Lord of hosts shall lop the bow with terror, and the high ones of stature shall be hewn down, and the haughty shall be humbled. And he shall cut down the thickets of the forest with iron, and Lebanon shall fall by a mighty one. See, God's pronouncing judgment. God used Assyria to punish Israel. And then God used Babylon to punish Jerusalem and Judah. And then God pronounces judgment upon them. Even though they're carrying out his will. All right, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 1. They say, if a man put away his wife. All right, so a guy divorces his wife. If a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's wife, okay, it doesn't say that, but that's what it's talking about here. Shall he return unto her again? In other words, you divorce your wife, she goes marry somebody else, are you going to return back to her? Jeremiah says, Shall not the land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. See, God's comparing this people with a man that divorced his wife. She goes to be with another man. And then he's going to return to her after she's defiled. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, spiritual lovers. Right? But the Lord says, Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places. You know, they're talking about worshiping false gods here. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been lying with. In other words, you committed spiritual adultery with every false satanic god under the sun. In the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Wherefore, the showers, now we're not talking about a bath here, we're talking about rain. Therefore, the showers have been withholden, 
and there hath been no latter rain, and thou hast a whore's forehead. Thou refusest to be ashamed. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me? My father, thou art the guide of my youth. Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldest. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king. Now, Josiah was a good king. He was the king of Judah. He was one of the last good kings. He was a great king. I'm looking forward. I look forward to meeting him one day. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. She's a whore. And I said, after she had done all these things, Turn thou unto me, but she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. See, Israel played the whore, and her sister Judah saw it. Okay? They're not the same. Israel and Judah. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. God divorced Israel, people. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly saith the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Wow. God got angry with Israel, divorced her, and yet, in a portion of time, Judah became even worse than Israel. Verse 12. Go, proclaim these words toward the north, and say, Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful. Praise God for that, people. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. That's right. Acknowledge your sin and turn from it, people. Only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors, not, uh, not pastures that sheep eat grass in, no, pastors, ministers, clergy, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord. They shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. I believe this is future, people. And all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north. People, what land is north of Israel? Take a look. It's Europe. 
In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. But I said, How shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the hosts of nations? And I said, Thou shalt call me my father, and shalt not turn away from me. Surely as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backsliding. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills. See, if you're worshiping on the hills and in the mountains and in the groves, your salvation is in vain, people. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. For shame hath devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. We lie down in our shame, and our confusion covereth us. For we have sinned against the Lord our God, we and our fathers, from our youth even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of of the Lord our God. Oh yeah. All right, so God destroyed the Assyrian Empire. And also the Medes and the Persians came after 70 years. All right, Babylon came, took Jerusalem, took everybody captive that they didn't kill. And after 70 years, uh, the Persians, which is modern day Iran, came and conquered Babylon. And then God pronounced judgment upon Babylon. In Isaiah 13, 19, it says, And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So, there we go. All right, in uh, Jeremiah 25, 12, and it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and will make it perpetual desolations. So it's going to be forever destroyed. Now, in Jeremiah 50, Let's read Jeremiah 50. All right, let's, uh, you know, this could be, this subject that I've been covering for the last 38 minutes could be uh, many, many, many hours of study. I mean, I'm just trying to give you a little background. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot. All right, so Jeremiah 50, verse 1. The word that the Lord spake against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard. Publish and conceal not. Say, Babylon is taken. Bel is confounded. B-E-L was the name of their uh, one of the satanic gods. Merodach is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded. Her images are broken in pieces. Now, in Mystery Babylon the Great, there's going to be an idol, the image of the beast. Well, it was the same in times past. It's going to be the same in the future. It's going to be the same. Now, the, the evil king of Babylon that Persia took captive, his name was Belshazzar. B-E-L. His first three letters of his name was the name of the false god. Uh, it probably, you know, he, he was serving Bel. B-E-L. What can I tell you? So, 
Verse 3, For out of the north there come, cometh up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate, and none shall dwell therein. They shall remove, they shall depart, both man and beast. You know, Babylon was never inhabited after that. God said Babylon would never be inhabited again. A perpetual desolation. Uh, King Hussein of Iraq tried to rebuild Babylon. Well, we know what happened to him, don't we? George Bush took care of that. Or Bush, one of the Bush, I don't remember if it was George or the other one. All right, so verse 4. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together. Israel and Judah are not the same people. And the children of Judah together, going and weeping, they shall go and seek the Lord their God. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thither with word, saying, Come, and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant. Perpetual, forever. Covenant is like a contract. And let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. My people hath been lost sheep. Didn't Jesus say he came, he was the good shepherd and he came for the lost sheep? Yeah. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. You want to see shepherds causing the people to go astray? Turn on the 700 Club or, the, or TBN. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. All that found them have devoured them, and their adversaries said, We offend not, because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Remove out of the midst of Babylon, and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans, and be as the he-goats before the flocks. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. And Chaldea, and Chaldea shall be a spoil. All that spoil her shall be satisfied, saith the Lord. Because ye were glad, because ye rejoiced, O ye destroyers of mine heritage, because ye are grown fat as the heifer at grass and bellow as bulls, your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. Because of the wrath of the Lord, it shall not be inhabited. But it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at all her plagues. What hisses, people? Snakes, right? Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she hath sinned against the Lord. What did Bel do? In uh, he, he took the vessels out of the house of the Lord in the last study I did on this, part two. He took the cups of the Lord out of the temple that were consecrated to the Lord's service put wine in them and drank them, and then praised the gods of wood and stone and gold and silver. I mean, blasphemy against the Lord. Blasphemy against the Lord. So the Lord's like, oh, okay, you want to do that? I, you know. And then the hand wrote on the wall. And then Daniel had to come in and, and you know, tell him, your, your time's up, buddy boy. And before that night was over, Belshazzar, the king of Babylon, was dead. God's wrath was upon him. So in verse 14, the enemy that God sends against Babylon, it says, Put yourselves in array against Babylon roundabout. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she hath sinned against the Lord. Shout against her roundabout. She hath given her hand her foundations are fallen, her walls are thrown down. For it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her as she hath done, do unto her. Now, from what I understand in history, uh, the Persians 
uh, there was a river that either went by the walls of Babylon or, or through it. I'm not sure exactly. But what they did was that they dammed up the river. It was a great river. They dammed it up. And the water built up and built up and built up. And then when the dam finally broke, a wall of water just slammed against the walls of Babylon and collapsed them. And then they, the Persians uh, went in and just wiped out Babylon. Just like it said here. Um, you know, her walls are thrown down. For it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her as she hath done do unto her. Cut off the sower from Babylon, and him that handleth the sickle in the time of harvest. For fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn every one to his people, and they shall flee every one to his own land. Israel is a scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. First the king of Assyria hath devoured him, and last this Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, hath broken his bones. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land, as I have punished the king of Assyria. And I will bring Israel again to his habitation, and he shall feed upon Carmel and Bashan, and his soul shall be satisfied upon Mount Ephraim and Gilead. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none. And the sins of Judah, there they shall not be found, for I will pardon them whom I reserve. Wow. Sins being pardoned, people. You know, those that are in Christ are forgiven. In Hebrews 10, 17, we read, And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. In Hebrews 8, 12, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquity, iniquities will I remember no more. You know, uh, if I make it into the kingdom, there's going to be people there that, knew me my first half of my life, and they're going to be looking probably at me going, Bob, what in the world are you doing here? And I guess all I'm going to be able to say is, by the grace of God, go I. That's it. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah 50 and verse 20. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none, and the sins of Judah and they shall not be found, for I will pardon them whom I reserve. Go up against the land of Merathim, even against it, and against the inhabitants of Pekod. Waste and utterly destroy after them, saith the Lord, and do according to all that I have commanded thee. A sound of battle is in the land, and of great destruction. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou wast not aware. Thou art found and also caught, because thou hast striven against the Lord. The Lord hath opened his armory, and hath brought forth the weapons of his indignation. Just like it's going to be in the end time, people. For this is the work of the Lord God of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans. Come up against her from the utmost border, open her storehouses, cast her up as heaps, and destroy her utterly. Let nothing of her be left. Slay all her bullocks. Let them go down to the slaughter. Woe unto them, for their day is come, the time of their visitation. The voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, the vengeance of his temple. Call together the archers against Babylon, all ye that bend the bow. Camp against it round about. Let none thereof escape. Recompense her according to her work, according to all that she hath done. Do unto her. Isn't that what it says in the 
Mystery Babylon, it says uh, basically do give to her double what she did to you. I'm paraphrasing. Recompense her according to her work, according to all that she hath done. Do unto her, for she hath been proud against the Lord, against the Holy One of Israel. Wherefore shall her young men fall in the streets, and all her men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, saith the Lord God of hosts. For thy day is come, the time that I will visit thee. And the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise him up. And I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour all round about him. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, The children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, and all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. But, verse 34, Their Redeemer is strong. And who they talk about? Christ is our Redeemer, people. He redeems us from sin and death. You know, you go to a pawn shop and, and pawn your wedding ring because you didn't have any money to pay a bill or something. And then you go back after, I don't know, a couple weeks and you get it back. That's called redeeming. Well, that's what we were under the curse of sin and death. Christ paid that penalty for us. He is our Redeemer. Their Redeemer. Who's Redeemer? Israel. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause. Just remember something. Christ is our defense attorney before God the Father, our judge. He shall thoroughly plead their cause that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. A sword is upon the Chaldean, saith the Lord, and upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes and upon her wise men. A sword is upon the liars, and they shall dote. A sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. A sword is upon their horses, and upon their chariots, and upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her, and they shall become as women. A sword is upon her treasures, and they shall be robbed. A drought is upon her waters, and they shall be dried up, for it is the land of graven images, and they are mad upon their idols. Therefore the wild beasts of the desert and the wild beasts of the island shall dwell there, and the owls shall dwell therein, and it shall be no more inhabited forever. Babylon is not going to be inhabited forever, no more inhabited forever, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord. So shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. Therefore a people shall come from the north, and a great nation, and many kings shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth. They shall hold the bow and the lance. They are cruel and will not show mercy. Their voices shall their voice shall roar like the sea. They shall ride upon horses, every one put in array like a man to the battle against thee, O daughter of Babylon. The king of Babylon hath heard the report of them, and his hands waxed feeble. Anguish took hold of him, and pangs as of a woman in travail. Just like a, the pain of a woman in giving childbirth, right? Behold, 44, behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan unto the habitation of the strong, but I will make them suddenly run away from her. And who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me? And who will appoint me the time? And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Therefore hear ye the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Babylon and his purpose, that he hath purposed against the land of the Chaldeans, Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. At the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved and the cry is heard among the nations. Doesn't sound good for Babylon, does it? Nope. Nope, sure doesn't. Just like Assyria and Babylon did the Lord's will punishing Israel, but because of 
their cruelty, God punishes them. All right, let's go to Jeremiah 51. We're going to read a couple verses here. Verse 8, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her. Take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her. Forsake her. Forsake Babylon, people. See, God wanted to take Judah out of Babylon, but he had a hard time taking Babylon out of Judah. But she is not healed, forsake her, and let us go everyone into his own country, for her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. Verse 37, And Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons, an astonishment, and an hissing without an inhabitant. Jeremiah 51, 44. And I will punish Bel, B-E-L, the false god. And I will punish Bel and Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he hath swallowed up, and the nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. Verse 47. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Oof. All right, now, if you want to read about uh, how Judah returned to Jerusalem, you can read Ezra, the book of Ezra, and the book of Nehemiah. But in part four, we're going to start covering uh, the attributes of Babylon in the latter days, the last days, the book of Revelation. But if you want to know the future, you've got to look towards the past. Satan has a game plan. It works. Why change anything, right? I mean, that's just the way it is. All right, so uh, this is the conclusion of part three. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.